check, check. One, two. Did we get it? We got it. Oh, oh my shit. Now, did you uh, did you step on an Indian burial ground today or something? Because I, I don't know if I did. To be honest with you, everything that could go wrong for me in the last 24 hours has happened. And it's all been. God, oh, no, you broke. In you my broke head, I'm like, I did this to us. And then my internet went out. Oh, my goodness. It is probably me. I'm going to be honest. No, no, it's okay. You know what? My audio went out and I had to, I did the same thing. I restarted everything. And <laughs> well, here we are. It ended up working. We, here we are, are here. No problem. Well, forward. <laughs> yes. Do, I'm going to do both hands just in case. <gasps> By the way, we're in, you're in the Noe Gnome studio. Oh, is yeah. that what I see? Yes. Should I sh give you a little, here's my little gnome gal. There's all I my love it i see eric bernal's butt cheeks or his added artwork as well yes yes eric has a whole side oh wait let's see right there there's some butt cheeks i will neither confirm nor deny whether he's been inside of those butt cheeks but we do have a photo of butt cheeks of a girl that eric actually knows on the wall oh okay that's beautiful does he just get that one piece or as the episodes roll in, does he get more and more? Uh, so the whole side is actually his stuff. I would say that's the main piece. But um, so Eric oh. actually joined the show. Um, I've been doing the No He Knows Nothing podcast for a little over a year. Um, yes. And it's been kind of piecing together the brand, whether I wanted to have a co-host, all these different mm -hmm. things. And so Eric is actually relatively new. And so I've had kind of stuff that I've been collecting over time. And I'm like, okay, like you have your boy side of the wall and we'll see where this goes. But yes, as of right now, it's kind of like a his and hers thing. Oh, okay. Cause I remember I saw the last two episodes with you and Eric and the introduction of Eric. And then um, I think last time you guys were talking about if you would go to your bro, if you were a guy and say, are you fucking my chick? Yeah. And it turns out that's, that's not a thing guys say to each other. Yeah, that's more of a woman thing. And um, and then before the earlier episodes I saw, was it like a different layout? You were facing your co-host. And so I didn't know if it was the same location. And then I didn't know half that stuff was Eric's. Maybe I missed that in the conversations. But yeah. I, you guys did talk about the butt cheeks. So I, I assumed yeah. that was his. But Yes, this is actually the same room as my co-host prior. I'll, g I'll give you the little rundown. Um, no, he knows nothing has been something I started like a YouTube channel years ago and yes. I had built this brand. No, he knows nothing. And I kind of had this little show where I would literally sit on the ground in front of like, I had no lighting or anything, right? I would sit on the ground facing a window so I could get natural lighting and record myself just like talking shit on my phone and I was putting up these YouTube videos. And then that progressed over time where I was like, I should have like a podcast and then I moved into a new place, got a spare bedroom specifically for the podcast and thought I was going to run it by myself. And my first like mock episode of No, He Knows Nothing as a podcast, I sent to one of my best friends who you've seen as my co-host prior to Eric, um, him and I worked in radio together. So I trusted his, you know, expertise. And I said, what do you think about mm -hmm. this? He goes, fam. You're making it way harder on yourself than it needs to be. I was like editing and chopping and doing all this stuff that you would do on YouTube videos, right? And right. he's like, you need someone in there just to talk with. He's, you just mm. need that's all a podcast. Okay. So he literally started off just like being in the room while I was doing the podcast. And then a couple episodes later, it was like, he was making some noise in the background. And then a couple episodes later, I was like, you're going to get a microphone for yourself. And next thing you know, he was kind of the unofficial co-host, uh, but he never wanted to be. So the cool thing is I'm still very good friends with that person, but Eric wants to be a co-host. He wants to have a podcast. He wants to be a part of something like that. So that's, there's that's the beautiful. rundown where we're at. Oh, yeah. You have way cooler friends than I do because I don't think anybody calls me fam. I think they call me. <laughs> I will never forget it when he said that. 
That was really cool. And by the way, I knew you bartended. I didn't know you were in radio as well. I think I'm not anymore. I'm not anymore. I did work in radio uh, for a little while when I first moved out to Arizona, kind of worked my way up bottom of the barrel, like started interning, got a promotions assistant job, then worked my way up to promotions coordinator. I had done some on-air stuff like here and there because that was the goal always. Mm -hmm. Um, It just never really stuck. It never really fit for me. And that was actually when I started making the YouTube videos. I was like, okay, if I can't talk and cuss like a sailor on FM radio, then I'm going to create my own platform. And that's kind of where No We Knows Nothing was born. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. And well, before we go any further, I just wanted to say that you are on a comedy advice podcast with your host. Stefan Satani. And hello, everybody. Also wanted to welcome you officially Noe Gnome of the Noe Knows Nothing podcast. Welcome. Pew, 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 pew. I know we were talking all that shit. You didn't even get to introduce the show. Oh, man. Usually I do like a little cold open. We chat and everything, but we just started. We dug right into it. Hot, Noe. Hot, hot open. Man, they, yeah, steaming hot open. And I'm happy it happened because I was just loaded with some great information oh, and good. my audience as well. So Good. this is perfect. And I know I was going to ask too, before I interrupted myself to give the intro to everybody, you, I know you're finishing your degree now. I heard on the last episode, what is it? Communications you said that you're doing journalism. Mm-hmm. journal. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Cause I was going to say, when did the dream spark to start doing uh, radio? Did you always want to do it since you were a wee lass or did it start? Yes and no. So I always knew like journalism, at which is such a broad path these days, was always the goal when I was a wee lass. Uh, as I, you lo- I love the way that you pronounce journalism. That almost sounded like it's a, oh, that's a journalism. It sounds oh, beautiful. I love that. Weird. A, like an ism instead of journalism. That's what it, yeah, 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 yeah. You said it fine. My kooky brain just started to think of it as like, oh, that's a journalism. It is it. an ism, yeah. Um, I, I, I always wanted to go to school for something like that, but I don't think that I knew it was going to take me the way that it did. Um, I started Ooh. in magazines when I was younger. i done some freelance stuff. I've done some copywriting. I've started, oh God, probably five different personal blogs over points in time. Radio was something that I was probably 24, 25. I started playing with the idea. All these different avenues that go into journalisms. Uh, Yeah, you like that? Um, And I I wanted, I really like music. I mean, who doesn't? So I thought that that was going to be the avenue for a while. And then that avenue took me into creating my own avenue. So I I really didn't know where I was going to go with it. But it's always been writing and creating my own content that, fuels my fire. That's beautiful. And I feel heat from that fire. And I have to say, I've driven a couple avenues, Noe avenues and the blog too is, is great. I think I saw the one on medium. I saw the one on knowingnome.com and I just, you dug in. Oh, I, I took my little claws and I started to dig into this Nomaverse and I feel like you're more of a, instead of a no, he knows nothing. You're almost like a no eat all because you are very well educated. <laughs> Thank you. Can I get that in writing? Because a woman actually just commented on the podcast saying that I was very uneducated. I'm like, listen, ma'am, I just, I pretend. heard, I just pretend it's funny. <laughs> I did hear that. And I was going to say, nay, ma'am, nay, no, he knows a lot. She's a no, eat all. you know what? I was actually searching to give you a review on Apple Podcasts. So I think that's what it's going to be. Know it all. And then I'll know it all in Bernal. Something like that. Beautiful. Oh, no, you froze. And we're back. And no, I just wanted to say on your your blog, I thought there was a lot of really cool stuff, specifically the article where you turned 30, which happy birthday. It's Thank like you. a little late, but. Okay. You didn't know no. me that. That's true. That's true. So you still get a chance. That's the rule. If you just meet someone, find out they turn 30 within six months or so, you can say happy birthday. Not 31 yet. Yeah. Beautiful. And, and a a wonderful 30, it turns out 
to be because you've got your podcast season two. And then you also had these little, these little tidbits that I loved. I think one of them was a phrase that you coined, get high on your own supply, which I really liked. Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot of, a lot of really good stuff and it made me feel good. And this is a comedy advice podcast where we give advice with little sprinkles of comedy. So I feel like it really hit my vein of, of, uh, and it was very on brand with the show. So well, you're a well-rounded you. person, Noe. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Stefan. You know, that's uh, only the creme de la creme on a comedy advice podcast. That's how it goes. But I wanted to talk a little bit about your podcast. And I know you were talking a little bit about the origin story. Now you've got a co-host that wants to be there. So that's yes. great. How did yes. you and Eric Bernal end up meeting? It's a funny story, actually. So good old social media. I had been kind of so my previous partner and I split ways, so to speak. We're still like the greatest of friends. Actually, he still produces the audio for the show. He just didn't want to be the face. Um, him and I did our last episode in July of 2020. And then obviously 2020 was a shit show. So I'm like trying to figure out what I want to do again. You know, it kind of felt like I was starting at square one. So I was posting here and there, you know, looking for a possible co-host, uh, looking for a videographer. I thought I went back to the, maybe I'll do it alone again, but I do need some help in general. Um, and a girl that I am friends with online, I had sent, you know, looking for people that like comedy that Mm -hmm. like, you know, podcasts that are into like this realm of things. And she had sent my story to Eric and Eric followed me, DM'd me and said, Hey, this girl sent me your stuff. I've kind of always wanted to have a podcast. Like let's get together sometime. So we did. I, he had a comedy show like then. And my thing, like I nerd out on comedy, like that's always kind of been my vision is for it to be comedy based. Um, And I went to one of his comedy shows like the next week. And then we sat down and had drinks afterwards and just kind of talked about our goals. And at that point in time, I was going to like talk to a bunch of different people, like put my feelers out there. I wasn't really ready to get going again because I was so scared about what if I start this again and then this person leaves me, you know, again, and I'm starting over again. And Eric, it was just like, all right, so when do we start? Like when are tomorrow? We're like, he was just like, I'm a part of the show. And I was a little taken aback at first, like, okay, guy, I don't even know you, but very quickly it became like a turn on, like in a non-sexual turn on. Like I was excited that there was somebody who just wanted to fucking do it. Like, let's go. No questions asked. I obviously have already seen his comedy. I know that he's willing to talk about anything and everything. And that's kind of the basis of my show is being very open. And so yeah, it just worked. We had a couple of meetings. We did a couple practice runs and we hit the ground running. Oh, nice. Wait, what did the practice runs consist of? Yeah, did you get a long winded answer? Um, the practice runs were basically just me showing Eric kind of my layout, like my show prep, my segments that I was currently doing, how I intro the show, the types of things that I talk about. Um, Obviously, you know, with him being in comedy, he already has a presence. And with my background in radio, I have a lot more of a a different presence. So it's kind of putting those like the uh, like the improv side with the thought outside and putting those two things together. I will say, though, our uh, practice runs were hilarious like I knew we're actually holding on to them in case we ever just decide to throw them out there I mean the setup wasn't done yet I I think the lighting was shitty we had like two different quality cameras like the production value of them are awful but the content had just him and I opening up to each other about our lives for the first time was hilarious and I was like okay this is this is it we're doing this oh god I'm so glad you recorded them because I was thinking that you just kind of Oh no, we did the full. Yeah. He probably thought I was a psycho at first. Cause I'm like, we're doing this as if it was a real one and you're going to sit there and I'm going to sit there and we're going to script everything out, but you don't have to go by the script, but you have to be prepared. Are you prepared, Eric? <laughs> He's like, fuck <laughs> mom. 
<laughs> that, to a point where we can just vibe now but i was so protective of my baby you know i was like am i gonna let this eric bernal character on it and here he is and he's killing it oh man he is killing it slaying yeah. and i i think the two episodes you just recorded another one today which should be coming out yes soon. tomorrow yes and he is absolutely hilarious so yes, he is. i i had him as a guest on mine a while I ago. Yeah. Oh, that was thank the first thing I did. Yeah. Oh, thank you for listening. Yeah. That was a, a, a grand episode. And I got to see him live a, a couple weeks before that. And I saw him and I was like, oh, oh. I got to invite him on over. So I, I uh, yeah. reeled him in and said, yeah. So do you on. frequent comedy shows in Arizona? Um, I, uh, I feel like I should say that with an accent. I do frequent comedy shows. I, I, yes, I go to comedy shows a lot. And then I have a lot of, um, I like to support local comedy. So I see a lot of local comics, have them on the show and then touring comedians. If they're coming in, sometimes I'll have them on promote their show and then I'll go to support them. So, okay. yeah, my wife is like the only times we ever go out now are to comedy shows and I'm yeah. like, well, there's food, right? Does she, so, like it? Does she like going? No, she hates it. She hates oh, comedy. Wow. That's like Not my wedding. Oh, she does. She does. I'm like, all I want is a husband to take me to comedy shows. Is that so much to ask? <laughs> Dude, it's so fun. And what I love, so my wife is Brazilian. English Ooh. is her second language. Ooh. Yes. Okay. It's, uh, I got very, very lucky. But um, she, she, I love that she's starting to take little digs at me and make fun of me. And it's just, it hurts on the inside a little bit, but I also am laughing so much how she makes fun of my hair. What did she make, get? Uh, she'll just make fun of the fact that uh, I'm a little bitch and I'm weak and uh, I'm practically, I'm, I'm practically a virgin, even though I am a married man <laughs> of like seven years. So oh I'm, yeah, I'm a nerd. So she makes fun of all that stuff. She's very sweet. I'm making her off like a horrible person, but she, yep. I've taught her this. She sounds, her this. she sounds like a Brazilian, very uh, flavorful. Full sure. of flavor. She's yeah, like- she, the heat uh, every, hear it again. Yeah, she's like, she's kind of like a Sofia Vergara mm -hmm. in Modern Family. Yes, I can and, see that. And I'm like the old husband, I guess. So, yeah, but here though, so killing it. Yeah, that's true. It's fake, actually. This is a toupee. I'm bald. Oh God, can you imagine if that was the case? <laughs> I I just started doing ponytails. Last ah, week. and how is that going for you? Does she make fun of you for that? She actually likes it quite a bit. Oh, cute. Yeah. Yeah, not the public doesn't. They think I'm a sex offender, so ponytails don't look good on me. <laughs> I only came on the show because I thought you were one. So what a disappointment. <laughs> yeah, that's how I get a lot of people on my podcast, actually. But and I show them a picture of me side with the ponytail. So oh my it, gosh, wait, this isn't making a murderer. That's not what. Oh. <laughs> that's one of our segments, actually. How did I do it? No. We, uh, God, I haven't, I usually, my hair is usually clean. It's like very, it's shaved. I do a, a razor fade, but okay. yeah, now that I feel like I, I this wait, what was that? that? All I've seen from you is this, but I've actually only known of you for a couple of months now. So that would make sense. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is my homeless state, but now it's because when I was trying to get a haircut, it was like trying to get alcohol in the prohibition. So I'd like knock on the door, they'd be like password, I'd be like snip, snip, and they'd be like, no, wrong. And then I wouldn't get in. So this is what happened. And I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of digging it, but I'm kind of, I don't know. It's a constant state of, I hate well, it. I love it. Things like digging it, then yeah, I think that's the hairstyle for you. <laughs> is this why nobody calls me fam? Because I say things like dig it. <laughs> I'll call you fam. Yes. Oh I'll my I fam. I have a literal fam. I have two brothers and two sisters and none of them call me fam. They call me His Family doesn't call me that either. It's this specific friend that's kind of how he talks, but I'll just I'll never forget that. It wasn't like a what up fam. 
he goes, I sent him the podcast. He goes silent for an hour. And then he texts me, fam, oh. just that. And I'm like, oh no, it's awful. Like you could just fam, you know? I know because if it's so cool that he said it like that too, because if somebody was trying to get something across to me with one word and they said, fam, I would feel like, <gasps> but if they, they say bro, so they're like, bro, yeah, it just doesn't come <laughs> across the vibe it was the same same context different word but yeah good guy he saved me from uh embarrassing myself more than i do on a daily basis oh man well hey that's what it's all about that's comedy and speaking of comedy speaking of your podcast speaking of your structure you've got some great segments like the ice ice segment I the see. i can't even yeah. and and eric did eric add the segment laugh her pants off yes he did Oh man, look at this synergy already. You guys. I know. I know. I was like, you got to come up with a segment. What can you talk about? He's like, I laugh bitches out of their pants. And I'm like, that's a segment. <laughs> I wish Done. that was long enough to fill a vanity plate because that sounds <laughs> perfect. Although <laughs> tomorrow he has a new segment. He's going to be bouncing back and forth between two. So there's a new segment for Mr. Bernal tomorrow. Oh, I'm intrigued to hear it. Does he only, you only permit him one segment per episode? We're still feeling it out, but I, I've been doing my ICE. I can't even the whole time. So we, we figured he needs one, you know, it, it kind of gets nice. to a point where it's like too many segments, you know, and now this segment, now this segment, now this segment. So as of right now, I've got one, he's got one. Good. Well, yeah. I've got 17. So this might not be the right time to say that, but maybe I should keep saying that but we haven't even hit one yet so i don't believe you well it's you're so interesting that i keep trying to transition but then i'm oh, like oh brown one, no. one more layer to peel off on this lovely noe cake oh, i was gonna I, say onion but i felt like onion would be not no, I'm certainly an onion compared to a cake i am 100 percent an onion i will say this perhaps you are an onion yes but Onions make dishes bomb. Oh God, that was a horrible word. That's why I have this hair. If I had the the razor fade, Bam, like the, it. it was bomb. <laughs> no, I would I say a fish today with a ton of onions in it because I'm disgusting. It was delicious. <laughs> but onions, God, I feel like they're underrated. So let's let's call you an onion. You're sophisticated, and um, you elevate what's around you. Thank you. That's very kind of you to say. You're quite welcome. Yeah. And you know what? I feel elevated too. It's not just that my chair is a little extra high this episode, but it's the presence um, of the noise. Thank you. Yes. Oh. Well, uh, no, no, we are going to jump into these segments. Oh, not, I'm so excited. Not literally, but metaphorically. And this first segment, and this is an advice podcast, and there's some questions that we're going to answer. But before we do, I like to get us nice and inspired. So okay. I like inspirational quotes. I am oh, a sucker. I remember it. Same. Yes. Okay, good. Oh, you kind of know what's coming. So I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help get them through their dark days. So Noe, do you have any? Ah, uh, don't be a dick. No, uh, I... <laughs> Confucius said that, I feel. <laughs> I screenshot quotes in my phone like crazy. I don't have a lot of them memorized per se. Um, I think I'm more of a, I don't, I don't know if we want to call it like a mantra, but I'm just very much one of those people. If I need a kickstart to get going or to get out of a funk or to get through something, I usually will stop and close my eyes and go through all the things in my life that I'm grateful for. And I might do that a hundred times a day. I might forget to do it for a week and then have a big event coming up. But anytime that I'm nervous or upset or I just do the gratitude list, I don't know if that's cheesy, but like, that's my inspirational quote is I am grateful for this, 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 this. And I mean, there's endless things. So that's incredibly cheesy and I'll have to edit it out. It was hey, way it's too cheesy. Fucking truth, man. Take it or leave it. <laughs> I do remember you saying that. I think that was your last yeah. item list on your blog for the post of turning 30, where you oh. write down every morning 15 things you're grateful for. Mm -hmm. And if it's a tough day, then you take a moment and you write down more. 
-hmm. I couldn't say enough good things about that because I have been listening to big old guy, Tony Robbins. And one of his things is you can't feel fear. You can't feel anger when you feel grateful for things. Very and true. I think that's very true. Cause I can't, I just can't try and say like, I love my wife and really feel a genuine anger. So I, I, I was going to start down writing I was going to start writing down 15 things I'm grateful for starting tomorrow. No joke. Cause I thought it was a good thing. I'm sorry. I don't have a great quote for you. Although I'll probably think of one at two o'clock this morning and text you, but uh, if you want to send a voice memo, you can send that and I can insert it in. So it's not as embarrassing for you, but oh, no, I'm, I, I live life to be embarrassed. I'm okay with it. I've accepted it at this point. Oh man. Yes. Let that onion fly as they say. So We've got this quote. I've got a quote actually to help embarrass myself too. It's not by any person whatsoever, but it's actually by a robot. It's called Inspirobot. And what he does, or she, I'm not sure, is takes all the, looks at all the wise words known to man and woman, and then just find some words and mash them together using AI to create a beautiful inspirational quote. Okay, you're replacing humans right in front of my face. Let's do it. I mean, we started at checkout lines and now we're doing quotes. So right. robots are going to take over pretty soon. Well, let's see actually by the quote. So this week, this quote from InspireBot is rule number one, be more like somebody who has anything whatsoever to offer to the world. Does that I think scream it? Solid. Yeah. But, go ahead. I said, don't you? Yeah, no, I actually, I think it's like, hey, get off your little crying ass and start being grateful. Or no, no, not being grateful. No, no. <laughs> yeah, get, get off your little tush and start feeling like you have something to give to this world because you do. Right, right. I or no, that's... maybe you don't, but you have to be more like somebody that does. Yeah, we should we should always want to give back in one way or another. We're here to do for others. So I think that makes perfect sense, Mr. Robot, Inspire Robot. I think he took those words from Mother Teresa and yeah. then gave it his own inspiration, Inspire Robot twist. Yeah. I, like it. I liked it. Rule number one. I um they also comes with a beautiful picture too, just like those pictures in the offices where it shows a little cat hanging on a tree saying hang in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the picture? It's a cat hanging on a tree. Oh, it really is. Okay. No, it's, it's not, but it should be. All right. <laughs> so now that we're nice and inspired, let's go into these questions that some fans have sent in that they've found all across the internet. So this first question is from Reddit. It's found by our fan, Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. It says, how do I tell my girlfriend we have roaches? My girlfriend and I have lived together for seven months in a big apartment building. Today, I saw a cockroach for the second time in seven months. It doesn't seem to be a major ongoing issue. My issue is that the building manager is contacted through an app that only my girlfriend has. I don't lie or hide things from her, but if this is a non-issue, then maybe it's best to let it go and not gross her out. Help? Are you looking for me to answer this question first? I'm looking. I'm looking for you. Yes. And would, do you have any thoughts? How do you yeah, feel about I, roaches? I, well, they're awful. I think that you need to handle it because you can hear them. Like this is not eventually, if you've seen them twice in what was it? Seven months, eventually she's going to hear one, see one and be freaked out. I mean, if one ends up in her hair in the middle of the night, I think this is something that you have to address immediately. Yes, I think you need to uh, roach the situation, not delicately, aggressively. Yeah. I feel like as Inspirebot would say, you have to be more like somebody who has anything whatsoever to offer to the world. I feel like as a staple piece of advice, women want to be in the know. So if she finds a cockroach on her own accord, like in her pants or in her hair or in the shower, she's going to lose it. But if oh. she years that there's a cockroach issue, but she hasn't had to see with one or deal with one, then she's going to feel like she's in the know and she can handle it before it becomes an issue for her. 
Oh yeah. I think the Someone woken up with a cockroach in her sweatpants before. So no. Yes. Not in Arizona, but I have woken up with a cockroach <sighs> in my sweatpants and cockroaches are much more respectable in Arizona. They don't just try to go up right in your pants. <laughs> I actually haven't seen one since I've lived here, but yeah, I think you definitely have to let her know. Definitely have to let her know. I think the best scenario is if you let her know and be like, babe, there's a cockroach situation and it's taken care of. And then you can show a picture of like the little tombstones that you've created for the cockroaches that you've but murdered. It's not going to be taken care of because he has to use her phone to get into the app to take care of it. Oh, no. I was thinking he murdered the cockroaches and then he sends a picture to that. So the whole, the manager doesn't even have to know about it. Manly as shit. But what yeah. if there's more than the two that he's seen? Well, I didn't think that far through. So That's then he's not worried about. I'm worried that there's an infestation problem that they don't know about. Oh man. I think maybe YouTube. That's where I would go before I try to go to the manager. I would try and look on YouTube how to to destroy a complete infestation of cockroaches in my apartment building. And it's and gonna be like call your apartment manager. <laughs> step one immediately call apartment manager step two notify girlfriend because she's going to be pissed uh, i'm all about trying to solve things for yourself uh, first definitely look into that but i think you have to tell the girlfriend you guys live together i mean he didn't mention that there was like a fear of bugs maybe she's going to have like a panic attack and not be able to sleep for weeks or something outrageous right. that we don't know about and that's why he's so worried but i feel like always communicate let her know I if there's you Mm -hmm. And and I was going to say, too, I feel like there could be a way that you could soften the message. Perhaps if you see one of the cockroaches, take a picture of it, but do it with the one of the Instagram filters with like the, the bunny ears or the dog ears with a. That is the opposite of softening. <laughs> the opposite. She doesn't want to see them. She's going to be traumatized. <laughs> But maybe if she saw them and they looked silly, then maybe she wouldn't be as traumatized. You're married? <laughs> do you this not know women at all? No, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what they do in Brazil, but that sounds terrible to me. Oh, dude, in my, she kills the cockroaches. I'm afraid of her because yeah. she will just stomp on them See, and i think that's kind of the way i am except for the one that was in my pants that one time i did i did scream like a girl but um i would have too maybe that's... maybe he could tell her that he's heard some noises in the wall and maybe it could be anything it could be a spider it could be a rat it could be a worm it could be but he just wants to have some so, let's just have someone come check it out babe mm. open-ended he wants to get the place checked out for insects in general that's that's, uh, that's a good idea being and shows he's being proactive i think if it was me i would say something if you see something say something when i lived in jersey that was the phrase and so i feel like if you do not say something and then she sees she's going to be freaked out but if you tell her like you i think this is all you said this five times so i'm just repeating it but it's yeah okay. We're wavelength gotta tell her somehow some way yeah beautiful okay moving on we've got this next segment and this next segment is called positive spin why you may ask or not care well i'll tell you anyway positive spin a lot of times things happen to us bad things and we start to think oh no this is gonna happen oh i'm never gonna be able to get over this and then we start to think negatively and we don't start to focus on how to get over the hump. So I have a scenario that's bad and you, Noe, and maybe me, if you need help, we will think of some positives so that we can train our mind to start thinking more positively when bad things okay. happen. I'll do my best. I'm gonna try and do my best to make that a shorter introduction to that segment because that's <laughs> way too long. I needed it, I needed it, it's fine. Dear Lord. Okay, so Noe. Here's the situation okay. it's for you. You have the absolute perfect first date with a guy. Okay. Never happened. Well, what, what's, what's your guy? What's a guy's, do you have a favorite name of a guy? Uh, no, but I usually end up with J's or K's somehow. 
J's or K's. Okay, every kiss does begin with K, so let's do a K name. Okay. Kevin. So Ke- Kevin, Kevin. You, th- you don't like Kevin? Connor? Oh, Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> what, what about Connor with a K? Because I love guys that say that's, that their first name. That's bomb. Yeah. I dig that. Okay. <laughs> His friends would call him fam for sure. Yeah. God damn it. All right. I don't like him already, but Connor, you, okay. you seem to like him. So he takes you out on a date, wines you, dines okay. you. What's your favorite restaurant? Oh, there's too many. Or there's like, many. sorry, type of food. What type of food is your favorite? Let's Italian. We're whining, dining, having Italian. Oh, it's Ital- okay. Italian. All right. So he takes you to Alto's. You have the, and then there's the nice gondola ride. Okay. With the gondoliere that, that sings some opera and stuff. And so you're like, wow, this is amazing. He tells you beautiful things. And so does Caven or Connor. And then- you guys get home and you're like, you know what? Invitation. Let's do this. Let's do the hanky panky. So it, what was that? I'm a hussy on my first date. Okay. All right. Maybe this is date number three, four, and you perfect decide. Date. Yeah. Perfect date. And then he starts to, he does all the right things. He compliments your, your under regions, beautiful butterfly vagina and you. gives you a massage gets you primed then it's time for him to reveal the main attraction or one of the main attractions the co-star in the show the co-host of this coital exploit do you want me to say it in case anyone's confused his penis he's gonna pull his penis out okay (laughs) see it's the long hair god damn it that's why people can't take me seriously that's why i never get earned the fam moniker for you i already have a bad rep okay the penis is coming out go on so his weenie but it's a it's a micro penis okay positives uh it's not gonna hurt <laughs> hey i haven't gotten laid in a while man it's tough when you have done in a while so if he has a micro penis then i know it's not gonna hurt that is a beautiful positive yeah i I think the best one that i got um what else if you've got more bonus points because that already i felt like was going to be he's confident because he actually decided to show that motherfucker Mm, that is true Mm -hmm. that is very true i've never i don't think i have i don't know if i know anybody with an MP, a micro penis. However, I don't, either. I don't, I don't need, I didn't even Google how big a micro penis is. Cause I think it's like really tiny. It's like, I a, think micro um, varies, but yeah. Oh, okay. It's all relative. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's an exact measure. Like, I guess if someone's considered a dwarf, there's like an exact measurement they're under what, like four eleven or something like that. Right. So there has to be an exact measurement for what constitutes a micro penis. But I would also imagine that it kind of gauges on how big the person is too. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. I've never seen one. I've definitely seen a smaller scaled one, but never anything I would consider micro. So Fair. those are my positives. I'm not going to hurt. I'm not going to bleed. And he's so confident. Oh, God. We did get into the making a murder scene right here. This is getting... Yeah. Murderous, but yeah. beautiful, beautiful positives. Noe, you win the podcast. Ah, oh. so, yeah. I think I didn't that's know. it. I didn't think of anything else, but I'm just gonna rely on confidence. He's so this guy's so confident. Dude, uh, props to Connor with a K because I feel like if if I had a micro, I mean, or any guy had a micro, I feel like they would be terrified to show that. But I guess at one point or another. You know, you're thirsty enough. You got to drink. So, have you ever uh, seen New Girl? Yes. Uh, I don't know how much you've seen. It's like one of my favorite shows. But there's an episode where Jess, the main character, meets like this gorgeous man, and she can't believe that this gorgeous man is even interested in her. And all of her friends are like, "He's way too good looking for you." And they sit down at dinner, and he's like, <laughs> "I have a micro penis." She's like, ah, uh, how micro are we talking? <laughs> is that episode a new girl? 
Oh, I, t- I forgot about that episode. And I think that's where I dug this up okay. from my subconscious. Cause I do remember that episode where he's perfect. He's yes. just got a micro penis. Yes. Great episode. And she's oh, trying man. to back it up. Like you guys, who cares? He's so nice. He's so handsome. They're like, ma'am, you're going to care eventually. <laughs> I think it just gets to a certain point where it's like size doesn't matter until it does. Correct. Mm. So, yes. So I didn't mean, I did not mean to belittle my micro penis listeners. I did not mean to make you feel any smaller than you are. It's making it worse. <laughs> so I do apologize. I I'll keep that private. All right, move, moving on. So we've got our last question of the okay. night. I don't know why I'm speaking in that cadence. I'm like Christopher Walken here. I'm so sorry. You sound like you just have like the voice for a microphone. Like that is one thing before even this podcast, like listening to you, I was like, wow, what a fucking voice. Like the things that you could do with that voice. I mean, you're doing oh. some of them obviously, but yeah, kudos to you, my friend. Oh, God, this onion's going to make me cry. That's... No, I'm serious. You have a great voice and you're very well-spoken. And I just like right away listening to you. I was like, oh yeah, that guy's supposed to be on a microphone. Oh sure. my God. I. Ugh. So yeah, cadence me down, daddy. You're doing great. Oh God. All right. Well, I don't know how to take compliments, so I'm just going to move on. But thank you, Noe. That is, oh. it means a lot. And I, uh, this is not my actual voice. I actually sound like this off air. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, let me get back into it. <clears throat> so anyway, this question is from Reddit. It's from our fan, John. <sighs> All right. It says, how can I stop talking? It may sound funny, but it's an honest question. I just can't stop talking when I'm at work or any other group of people. I always talk when I was younger, people seem to be annoyed a lot. Now they sometimes feel I really need to take a deep breath, but they don't seem to be mad at me. A lot of people that feel envy for me being so extrovert. The point is I am not, I'm more of an introvert. I'm stressed when I feel like I have to talk to strangers yet. I can't stop doing it. Help. Ooh, I like how you read that. Thank you. I feel like I, I, I got into character. I just, I, I imagined my hair being just a little bit longer and having glasses and being called. That was what I, Evan. I feel like there's two options here. And this person has to try both to figure out which one's going to work. One is Adderall. The other <laughs> is marijuana. Cause everybody <laughs> operates differently. But this is either like a Ritalin Adderall situation or a CBD pot situation. I, and I mean, that I, the best way. like I have plenty of friends and family members with ADHD and mm-hmm. maybe that's part of it. Or maybe it's the opposite because I think this person said they're so introverted that then when they get around people, they just talk, 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 talk. So maybe they need the pot to chill them the fuck out with that anxiety that's hitting because they're around people. This is a substance abuse answer in one way or another. That is my advice. I love it. Drugs. And I just imagined, as you said it, with the doctor giving the prescription, although it's recreational use now here in Arizona. Yay. Yeah. But him I'm- just writing a prescription. Oh, I'm sorry. What were you saying? Oh. I'm curious if this person does smoke weed already. That would be a good question. I like that. But if not, the doctor writing the prescription being like, this is some marijuana to chill the fuck out. I just um, test it out. Maybe when I smoke weed, I get more talkative. Mm, really? I start saying stupid shit and my eyes get low, but I get very talkative when I smoke weed. So mm. maybe not the answer. Okay. You know, it has been a day and a half since I have smoked weed, but I get very tired and I I can't remember. I think it was like 2014 last time. Not long for me, but I I don't really dabble in that anymore. I used to be quite the pothead in my Seattle days, but. Oh, well, you kind of got it. I mean, in Seattle, that's that's customary. If I'm going to give a non-drug abuse answer to this person, it might be to hang out with people more often in your free time because Mm -hmm. they're so secluded so often that when they are at work or in social settings, they just have this like need for connection. So they're like overbearing. 
But maybe if they were to start making more friends to hang out with on their own time and like working on some of those social skills in the home or at private lunches, then when they're in larger settings, like at work, they're more prepared to be around people. I I love, I I do like that. Yeah. Because if you, sorry. First Ritalin, definitely try that one first. (laughs) Yes. First go to drugs and then go to other things. I was thinking that too, because I, I have a little bit of this problem as well, where when I talk and in the podcast scenarios, I don't like there to be any silence. So I will just cram those silences in with syllables and words and interlocutors and all types of things, just so I don't have to suffer through this agonizing millisecond of silence. So as I'm doing right now, but I think what you need to do is get comfortable with silence. Just like you said, maybe start a podcast. Well, then they're going to be talking on the podcast. I agree though. I'm the same way. It's like, it's, I mean, I've been talking over you probably plenty. I think I have that same, like there can be no silence. I mean, I'm even that person in the car They say you're not supposed to talk over music in the car, right? I'm like every two seconds turning it down. Hey, did you see that sign back there where, you know, and whoever is like, can we just listen to the song? I'm like, hey, what did you want to go eat? Like I'm constantly talking. Um, Maybe I'm the one that needs Ritalin or marijuana. Who fucking knows? I I might, I wrote this question. I was going to say, I think maybe we co-wrote this question because we are very, very similar in that regard. Well, (laughs) God. Well, good. I feel like we gave some solid advice here. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't think I should do that with my hands, but uh, I, I feel like this was a, yeah, I just, okay. I'm very Italian. So I do a lot of, Oh, are you Italian? See? Si. Yes. No, oh. I actually, I, I was born here, but then I lived in Italy since I was five years old. Um, until about 30. Yeah. So that was a lie. I don't know why I lied to you. I just want to impress you. I I felt bad with the like talking about the uh, Italian food and my fake boyfriend Connor is Italian and oh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Fake Connor is better than me in every way. No, but I do. Oh, Eric spot. Mota. Mota. Wait, Mota. Yes. See, do you know what that means in Italian? Yes. I was hilarious when I bought that dog at 18 years old. Oh, it, it made me chuckle inside my, my little cat. So I have a little cat and I call her Bellina. So she's like little Bella. Oh, you. I actually, I was thinking about you when I heard on the episode, the latest episode with you and Eric, where you were talking about volunteering, teaching Mm -hmm. children and and helping them with their homework. Mm -hmm. I used to, I got a grant with the help of one of the professors at ASU through the Italian government to teach Italian as an after school program at Broad, yeah, Broadmoor Elementary School in Tempe. So it was a nightmare i hated it and why because it was range of kids it was it was like kids what was it first through third grade oh that's why it was a nightmare and there were 60 of them yeah that sounds awful And, and my dream was to be an italian teacher that's what i wanted to do when i graduated college oh and you changed your mind rapidly or they slaughtered that dream with their screams and their their they made fun of me they were like uh uh, fam and i was like and they're like no not you idiot and i was like oh damn it damn it so a Uh, lot of that i got bullied by first to third graders and they didn't want to learn italian i will be doing that tomorrow afternoon luckily i'm not trying to teach them another language it's actually cool because most of the kids that i work with um spanish is their first language so if there's ever a parent that shows up, I know very, very, very little Spanish. I mean, enough to get the point across, but very little. Uh-huh. So if someone shows up, you know, maybe a parent or a brother or sister or something, 
um, and I need to speak with them, I can ask one of the sixth graders, you know, how do I say this? And they will do it for me. And I'm like, God, it's so smart to be bilingual at that age. It's so impressive. So it, it's so cool. I teach them, I think that yeah my so my wife and i we want to teach our kids when we have them italian and portuguese yeah she speaks exactly. portuguese and then they're so close that i got to learn portuguese and she learned italian so we speak all three in the house especially when we fight so oh i can imagine i can imagine yeah, yeah it's a good time but anyway noe first off Thank you so much for joining a comedy advice podcast for having me, especially through all the Wi-Fi issues. You're a real one fam. Oh, my God, one. I was waiting for it. Oh, how, thank you, fam. Anytime. I, really appreciate you having me. I think I ruined it, but I also did want to ask oh. where can people find you? What have you got to plug? What have you got going on? I am Noe Gnome on almost everything. Um, it surprises me people misspell gnome all the time. So there is that silent G, N-O-E-Y-G-N-O-M-E. And that is um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. I, I don't use all of those things. So if you add me on Snapchat and I never add you back, that's why. But I'm on Instagram and Twitter pretty actively, Noe Gnome. Noe Gnome on YouTube, the podcast, you can type in Noe Gnome or Noe Knows Nothing. Anything with Noe in it, I will pop up. Beautiful. And I just, I was going to ask what Noe was short for. Was it Nosef or Nosefina? <laughs> uh, so my name is Noel, and that was actually my family nickname growing up. <laughs> yeah, was it hard for you to put that together? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was really. <laughs> I, uh, I hated that nickname growing up. They would call me Noe, Noe Bear, Miss Noe. I hated it. And then it started catching on with my friends all through middle school, high school. Noe, Noe, Noe. So now at this point, no one even calls me Noelle anymore, except for maybe my mom. Oh, okay. Okay. That's So you've embraced the name that was... Yes. I've embraced it and branded it at this point. But ooh, I used to fight with my brothers. Don't call me that. <laughs> oh my god oh that's so cool i did oh no i didn't i don't have a similar story i just changed my name on a whim in sixth grade and oh. now i'm stefan i used to be steven oh wait so was th was it with the ph still and it was just pronounced differently and you chose to pronounce it or did you change the v to a ph yeah my parents when they saw when i first came out of my mom's womb they said, this kid looks like a little stinker. Let's fuck with him. And then they gave me the PH, the phonetically ambiguous name. So uh -huh. then when everybody, they'd either spell my name if they heard Steven, S-T-E-V-E-N, or sure. they'd call me Stefan. So I was like, you know what? Stefan sounds way cooler. It's got a lot of panache to it. And I feel like I might be called fam if I get Stefan as a name. So I chose in sixth grade to go by Stefan. And then everybody got it confused and calls me Steven. So I, well, I did ask you when we were having some technical difficulties earlier, I was like, Hey, uh, before we do this, is it Steven or Stefan? Cause I've I seen might, it pronounced both ways. I know I'm, I might have to legally change it to like S T E F F F F F F F E N. So just to get the point across, <laughs> cause I get it well, all the time. Yeah. Oh, I can imagine. Ironically for me, if I write my name anywhere, Noel, doctor's mm -hmm. office, dentist's office, whatever. Every single time when they call me back, Nicole, every time I don't. And it makes no sense to me other than the fact that they both start with an N. So, which is almost why I prefer the Noe at this point in my life. If I put Noel on something, they will call me Nicole. That is so weird. I think Noel is an absolutely gorgeous name. I like Noe too. Noe is like, uh, I think it's like Bruce Wayne and Batman. Cause when. Oh, yes. Noe is my Batman, right? Fuck yeah. And it's super badass. I feel like Noe is, is a, a character in itself. Like I could hear a radio personality called Noe. See you. You've got your thing. And it's perfectly branded with Noe. So. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Ah, anyway. Italian. <laughs> oh. Cut that that part yeah. out 
<laughs> All right. Well, we're going to end the show. No, if you want to stay on for like 30 seconds after we say goodbye to the audience, that'd be great. But um, audience, you guys were wonderful. You just sat there and you took it and you took it well. So appreciate you. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, rating, say hi, follow on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube. Just started that up and uh, give me an air hug. Oh. Ah, that felt good. One might say this was a micro penis episode because you said that they just took it well. Oh yeah. And they didn't even feel it. No pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no blood in this interaction. So beautiful. That was, that was great. Now, if I labeled my episodes, I would call this the micro penis episode. Oh, <laughs> God damn. Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you listeners. We'll talk at you next week. Bye-bye. Ciao. Arrivederci.